My first tip, question practice. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. So in part two of this video, I'm going to be talking about the tips to pass ACCA, my journey, mistakes I made along the way, and also the tuition providers that I would recommend. So I officially became an ACCA member in March 2019. I sat my last exam in March 2018 and my first exam was in June 2016. So when I did ACCA, there were actually 14 exams. I went to Middlesex University in London and I did BA Accounting and Finance. So I actually got eight exemptions, so I only had six exams to sit. So the first exam I sat was the Audit and Assurance paper and at the time P1 was Corporate Governance, I think it was. Anyways, long story short, big mistake. So sat the exam. It went horrible, went horrible. I got 48% uh, on the audit, so I failed because 50% is the pass mark. And I think I got like a 44 or 43% on the carpet governance. So I'm supposed to resit these exams in September because ACC at that time, that's when they moved to having four sittings because before they used to just have exam sittings in June and December. But now there's an exam sitting in September. However, bright girl Katie decides that oh yeah I'm gonna register for my exam but I'm gonna do it late so I missed the late registration deadline so I couldn't sit those exams in September which is probably in hindsight a good thing because I don't think I had actually revised enough to pass those two exams in September so because I couldn't sit in September I had all the time till December to sit so December came and your girl passed all two this is what I did differently now. Instead of sitting two exams at a time, I started to sit one exam at a time. Only because the syllabus was so huge, and honestly, I was working um, full-time at a big four accounting firm. I wasn't working in audit, I was working in advisory, so I didn't have busy season, but I was still busy. I sat my next exam in March 2017, which was P3, which is no longer around because it's part of the strategic business leader um, exam. So I sat that, I got my highest mark in ACCA papers. Then I sat P2 in June 2017, passed that, woohoo, girls on a roll. Then I'm like, okay, I just did the papers in December, did one March, did one June. Let me take a break in September and not sit any. Let me sit my last two, because remember, I only had six exams to sit, so I've just passed four exams now. So I had my last two papers, which were the professional papers, and those were the two optional papers. Big mistake, big mistake, Katie. I don't know why I did that. I should have continued on my streak of one exam at a time. So anyway, I sat all two in December. Um, needless to say, I was sick before the exam. That's not an excuse, but I was really sick before the exam. On Monday, I had audit and assurance. Did that exam, was still sick. Came out of the exam, had to study obviously for P5. I was actually sick in that exam and I actually threw up in that exam. So I only did question one for that exam. So needless to say, you know I failed because if you know ACCA the pass marks 50% and you have to answer every question to even try to be able to get 50% so I only answered question one so I failed that one so I passed um, audit and assurance in December 2017 yes I passed my audit and assurance in December 2017 so I emailed ACCA to see if they could um defer that exam for the p5 because i was sick but they wouldn't but that's fine it's whatever so in march 2018 i sat my p5 and i passed so yes i passed in march 2018 so that was the end of my exam so i passed all my exams by march 2018 i started in june 2016 and along the way i had done the ethics and professional module so i did that before i even got halfway through my exams i think and then i still needed three years relevant work experience so i couldn't actually apply for ACCA membership until November 2018 because I'd started working at the big four at one of the big four company November 2015 so I wouldn't have been eligible for the three years work experience until November 2018 and then I applied um I applied late like I, I applied after I met my three years relevant work experience then I became an ACCA member in March 2019 so quite excited about that So yeah, so let's get into my tips to pass ACC exam. I'm um, just going to put a disclaimer. 
every person is different what works for me might not work for you etc the tuition providers that I recommend might not work for you but they worked for my colleagues and stuff so I'll just get into what worked for me and hopefully this is helpful for someone else so my first tip is to sit one exam per sitting there's now four sittings per year as opposed to the normal two when there was only a sitting in June and December I definitely could understand why people would sit two exams at a time because it would take so long for the next exam sitting that you would be doing ACC exams for years before you could finish but now that they have four sittings I would recommend sitting one exam per sitting and if you were to fail the exam you know that the reset is three months as opposed to six months down the line like how it used to be learning hours are a lot it's 400 learning hours that ACC recommends per module on top of that the syllabus is quite huge so my first tip <laughs> and I preach by this I know a lot of um the company that I used to work at the big four company I used to work at they didn't want us to sit one exam per sitting they used to really give us a hard time and say no you're supposed to be sitting two but I think that you get better results personally and from what I've seen by sitting one exam so you just focus on that exam and pass that exam the first time I sat two exams I failed all two the second time I sat all two exams I failed one so I just think maybe it's me maybe it works for some people to sit two three during a sitting but for me while having to work as well if I didn't have to work maybe I could do two per sitting but I think when you have to work or you have other responsibilities like children I do think if you can it's best to sit one per sitting number two is ensuring that you learn your module so you can't just skip and say oh well this doesn't seem like a lot so I'm not going to go through that I think that you should spend time on each chapter and ensure that you grasp the information you understand the concept etc you have to understand the paper that you're sitting so if you're doing audit and assurance you need to actually complete the learning guide you can't just say oh let me just look at notes you should probably be tip number one because this this was key in passing question practice i know lecturers preach this all the time question practice will get you through an exam honestly i know in the tip before i said like to learn the module learn the material right but you can learn that and if you don't know how to execute it and actually practice question papers you're not going to succeed because in the exam they're not going to know that you know it in your head they want to see that you know it on the paper question practice is key i failed those first two exams in june 2016 i didn't do enough question practice like tip number four you have to practice to time that is so important because when you're in that exam the pressure you feel with the time that can't be your first time that you're actually doing an exam to time you have to practice past papers to time it is key it is vital to you passing like I'm getting so passionate because I'm just thinking about honestly the more you practice questions the more comfortable you get with the exam it doesn't it doesn't feel as scary so when you get into the exam it's like okay mm -hmm, I know this topic okay yeah I remember what that lecturer said or yeah I remember when I did this question and I wrote it out the keywords I need to put in this answer to ensure that I get the marks so question practice, I can't preach it enough, is very important. Okay, so now we're going to get into tuition providers. So there are loads of tuition providers out there. Honestly, what works for me might not work for you because I've had work colleagues that swore by certain um, tuition providers. And when it came to me, I was like, they do nothing for me. I've like you know what i'm saying so it, it really depends on you so i'm gonna just list out and have on the screen some of the tuition providers that i use and what i liked about them and hey maybe you can check them out you know so the first i'm gonna do is accountancy so um i'll put it on the screen it's spelled kind of funny like a cow <laughs> but yeah so the pros that i see for accountancy are that it's very easy to understand they break things down in summary form they also go through questions so you have a free version and then a version that you can pay for so there are a lot of free items on there so i really enjoyed accountancy i couldn't just use accountancy alone personally and pass but I found it very good like if I didn't understand something in a lecture I could always go to accountancy and be like oh this is how you break it down kind of thing another reason why I like accountancy is that it makes accounting fun like it doesn't seem as stressful and I'm a visual learner and it's very catchy it's like a lot of colors I don't know I just think the accountancy website kind of breaks down accounting what I found that really worked for me in getting me to pass was LSBF which is London School of Business London School of Business and Finance I think I hope yeah London School of Business and Finance I think I did all my professional papers with LSBF and I really 
really really really enjoyed LSPF. It's a funny story how I actually um, found London School of Business and Finance. I actually googled a question and it popped up on YouTube and it was actually a lecturer from London School of Business and Finance and I was so intrigued with the lecturer because he actually did question practice during the lecture and I was like oh I am, I'm actually understanding this like I like this he's breaking down this question so well like this is what I need googled his name sent him an email said hey I saw your video on YouTube um how do I do, 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 do? and then they emailed back letting me know that they had it posted anything on YouTube that was stolen materials I was like oh shit oops but anyways <laughs> I um I contacted and I registered the reason that I think LSBF really worked for me is that a lot of the lecturers are actually exam markers so they know what you need to write and what they're looking for. I remember doing a mock test for um I think P7 for the audit and assurance and I think I got like 18 18 marks. And he was like, "If you continue like this, you're going to fail." And da -da 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 -da. and honestly, I was like, "Holy smokes, 18 like what am I, you know?" And that kind of feedback is what you need because you don't want to sit the exam and then you're like, Oh crap, why did I fail? No, you need that hard advice then so that you can fix up and do what you need to do ahead of the exam to pass. And I actually passed P7 on the first take. And even though I didn't pass P5 on the first take, that's because I didn't finish the exam, I passed it on the second take. So I really enjoyed that they had lectures, but during each lecture, it's almost like you have a question and answer section. So I really enjoyed that. So it's like when he's teaching a topic, he also goes over an exam question kind of style thing. Another reason why I like LSBS, the the lecturers that I had they actually had their own answers for each past paper as well so if it was like a 2013 paper they would actually write the answers in their own words because what I found a lot of times with ACCA is that when I'm looking at the ACCA answer it just sometimes it seems so technical and a bit like oh how am I gonna write all this in the exam I'm gonna be like Ugh. It's just going to be too much for me to remember and to write that fancy kind of, no shade, but lecturers writing their own answers. It was a lot easier for me to understand and I knew what keywords and what key points I needed to put in my answer to ensure that I got the mark. So for P7, I used LSBF and I also used this lecturer in Trinidad. He was offering his services virtually. Those were the two main reasons why I passed because the guy in Trinidad, um, Shamid Abraham, you may have heard of him before but he would really just let us know like hey you don't need to write all this fluff they don't want all this fluff they want this these key words will guarantee you marks when you write to from date subject that's one mark each or a half a mark each that's how you get the marks all this fluff is not needed and that's what you need to know because a lot of times I do think that people do know the info or they're scared nervous or whatever but sometimes we write too much fluff and we're not writing the key points that these exam markers need open tuition so I would normally go on open tuition honestly for an exam or after an exam just to see what people were saying because they have a lot of forums and stuff so it's quite informative and you can find a lot of helpful information or a lot of people on open tuition um, want to be parts of like whatsapp groups and support groups and stuff like that or they'll ask questions and then a lecturer will answer it on there and it's free so open tuition is quite good for you BPP so my workplace um, recommended BPP because as I said worked at a top big four accounting firm and that was just what everyone used until Katie joined because I was like BPP ain't working for me lectures were quite long it was a bit boring it wasn't really catchy for me I'm a visual learner as well so BPP just didn't work for me it's worked for a lot of people it just didn't work for me See, so I have friends that have recommended Becker and Kaplan and BPP but honestly I tried BPP it didn't work for me I've never tried Becker or Kaplan because honestly after I failed um, my first two exams and then once I found LSBF it honestly worked for me that I didn't need to look for tuition providers I'd recommend accountancy and LSBF and I'll leave the details for um, Shamid Abraham Another bit of advice that I want to give and want to make sure you know before you start these exams or if you are doing these exams currently is that you have to dedicate time like it is a commitment to pass these exams based on the learning hours and the current pass rate of these exams it shows that these exams are hard and you need to dedicate time like you have to focus so when I say that I mean 
unfortunately your social life isn't going to be as sociable as it was before you started these exams you're going to have to sometimes say no to going out or no to certain parties or events because you have to dedicate that time i was working while studying for these exams and honestly with a full work day i had to get in study time so i had to set a timetable so i would normally get to work early so before work started at 8 30 i would sometimes study i honestly remember times at work being at work till like 2 a.m in the morning it worked out great for me because a lot i had a lot of friends in audit and they had busy seasons so they were already working late hours so I would go home shower eat dinner grab some snacks and come back to work at like 7 or 8 and stay to like 2 in the morning so that's just showing the kind of commitment that it takes your weekends aren't gonna just be for you anymore you have to really commit time to passing these exams. You have to look at the module in entirety to make sure you have enough time to cover it so that when you do go on study leave or if you don't get study leave so that you have enough time to practice past paper questions before the exam. During study leave, I just don't think it's a good time for you to start learning things. I think study leave time, that's the time that you have to practice, 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 practice your past paper. So my advice to you is to do study timetable, stick to it, learn the module and ensure you have enough time to cover your past paper questions to time. It's very important to make sure that during the time allocated you can answer as much if not all the questions on the paper to ensure a greater chance for you to pass. So that's my recommendation to just and a bit of advice to just let you know like you're not gonna have your usual going out life and try to fit this in because you already have a full think about it you already have a full schedule you already have work if you're working you already have work and you probably have like other responsibilities out there so adding ACCA to the mix you're obviously gonna have to cut back on other things that you have currently going on in your life I underestimated these papers. When I was at uni, they always used to say, oh, ACCA is gonna be one of the hardest exams you've ever sat, but I did really good at uni. I got a first class degree. So I was like, okay, like no problems. I'll just study and I'll pass. Big mistake. These are some hard papers. The I made was choosing two exams at a time. And I honestly didn't put in enough work into these exams. I didn't even know the module fully. And I didn't do the most important thing, which is question practice question practice is how you will pass these exams honestly there's no other way foundation slash advice and tip and if I could do this over again I think when I finished university I would have just went on to do ACCA I don't think I would have moved back home and started working I would have preferred to actually do ACCA right after uni so be able to actually go to a class for ACCA so say it was audit and assurance to actually go to an actual tuition provider face to face I would have preferred that than working because honestly when you work and do these exams it's very stressful you have to make sure that you're still performing well at work while still passing these exams and it can be a bit stressful because then you have like eight C departments like hey have you passed and then it's like oh she's failing it's a lot of pressure it's just a lot I have a lot of friends that have said like they would prefer to just actually do these exams without letting their workplace know and then once they've passed let their workplace know so if you can it doesn't work for all of us some of us once we finish uni we need to get a job we need to work we got bills so I understand but if you were awarded the option or if you know once you've finished uni your situation allows for you to just do your ACCA right after I would recommend doing that if I were you if I could do it again that is exactly what I would have done but yeah so I hope you found this video helpful um share it with your friends share it with anyone that you know that's doing ACCA and thank you so much for watching and I wish you the best on your journey